Welcome to the White Dot Zoo. The White Dot syndromes are a group of inflammatory chorioretinopathies in which the common clinical feature is the presence of multiple discrete white lesions located at the levels of the retina and choroid. The white dot syndromes most often present with symptoms of photopsia, floaters, blurred vision, and visual field loss. Though these conditions share many similar clinical features, including chorioretinal lesions, there are several distinctions between each entity. This sketch takes place at the white dot zoo. Notice all the people with cameras taking pictures. As mentioned previously, photopsias or flashes of light that appear in the eye are a common symptom of the white dot syndromes. Let these abundant amount of cameras be a reminder of this important symptom. Let's take a look at our first exhibit, multiple evanescent white dot syndrome, or MUDES. Okay, maybe not quite the cute meow of a cat, but let this lion be the symbol for MUDES. This syndrome typically occurs in young patients age 20 to 50 and more often affects myopic women. Let the sign of glasses in this sketch be a symbol for myopia. This condition is also typically unilateral. Let this one young woman standing at the exhibit be a reminder that it tends to only affect one eye. Although we don't really know the cause of white dot syndromes, MUDES is associated with a viral prodrome. <coughs> Let the sneezing woman be a reminder that MUDES often starts with being ill with something like a cold. This young woman got to be one of the first tourists today to visit the exhibit because of her rapid pass badge. Because the condition is unilateral, it may present with a relative afferent pupillary defect, or RAPD. Let this woman's lanyard around her neck be a reminder of that. On fluorescein angiography, MUDES often presents with a wreath-like pattern of hyperfluorescence. Notice the lion's mane and wreath-like appearance. Speaking of customers with rapid passes, let's turn our attention to the aquarium next door. The Azul Aquarium. Acute Zonal Occult Outer Retinopathy, or Azor, is another white dot syndrome that has a predilection for young patients, often women compared to men. However, this condition is typically bilateral, although asymmetric, with one eye being affected first, then the other eye gets affected as well. About 75% of patients will have bilateral disease. Let these two young women with glasses be a reminder that the condition is bilateral and tends to affect those with myopia. Let the other woman joining to catch up with her friend before the show starts be a reminder that often the second eye lags behind the first eye. Because the condition is asymmetric, there may still be an associated RAPD. They're having fun with sparklers as another reminder that all these syndromes are associated with photopsias, with patients complaining of flashes of light that are very prominent. Notice our host throwing a white ring around our dolphin. As Azor progresses, rings of hyperfluorescence can occur around the fovea and around the disc. Let this white ring be a reminder of that. Oh, looks like more entertainment is on the way. The White Dot Zoo has a snazzy amphitheater and looks like they are setting up for the day. Let these amplifiers on stage remind you of APMPPE, affectionately called AMPI, which stands for Acute Posterior Multifocal Placoid Pigment Epitheliopathy. That's a mouthful. Let's just keep calling it AMPI. Looks like we already have one amplifier on stage. But here comes our second man pushing another amplifier on stage. Let the presence of two people with two amplifiers be a reminder that this condition affects both eyes. Just like at the Azul Aquarium, the condition starts off with one eye being affected, with the second eye lagging behind and not getting affected until days to maybe even weeks later. <coughs> Bless you. Looks like our host is sneezing. Like our young lady in MUDES, AMPI is also associated with sickness or viral illness before ocular manifestations. We have both a man and woman on stage, as this condition occurs in both men and women equally, 
typically before the age of 50. Notice all these red cords attached to these amplifiers. Let these red cords remind you of vessels. One very important distinction to make with AMPI is that it is associated with cerebral vasculitis, which is a rare but potentially deadly complication of this condition. A high level of suspicion is needed when dealing with these patients for any neurological signs. Consider detailed neurological exams in head imaging when the exam is suspicious for headaches, numbness, seizures, confusion, ataxia, or paralysis. This stage is for employees only, hence the wire fence with the blocked sign. On fluorescein angiography, AMPI is characterized by a pattern of early blockage and late staining. Let this blocked sign be a reminder of that. Looks like we have some people all ready for the show with their picnic blankets. Let's take a look at these two women sitting right in the center of this picnic blanket. Let them represent PIC, or punctate inner chorioretinopathy. Let these two women be a reminder that this syndrome typically affects both eyes and in young women, usually around their 30s. Once again, let glasses in this sketch be a symbol for myopia as this condition typically affects myopic woman. Notice how they are sitting right in the middle of the blanket. Let this be a reminder that the yellow-white dots in the retina and choroid tend to be confined to the posterior pole. Whoa! It's wine night at the zoo. Let this accidental spilling of red wine be a reminder that this condition can be associated with neovascularization. The multiple lesions in the posterior pole can evolve into atrophic scars and can be associated with choroidal neovascularization. Although typically, all of the white dot syndromes thus far have good visual prognosis, punctate inner chorioretinopathy's prognosis is more guarded with the development of choroidal neovascularization. Looks like the tourists next door also had a similar idea. Notice these multiple young women also laying all around their picnic blanket. Multifocal choroiditis is another white dot syndrome seen in young women around the age of 30. Unlike in punctate inner chorioretinopathy, the white and yellow lesions are more spread out in the retina and choroid rather than being confined to the posterior pole. Looks like they're having a lot of fun. This picnic blanket has seen some wear and tear. As the white and yellow dots turn to scars, these lesions and multifocal choroiditis can develop a classic punched-out appearance. Let these holes be a reminder of that. Looks like they brought snacks as well. Notice all the popcorn on this particular sketch. Let that popcorn represent vitreous cell, which is associated with this syndrome. This is in direct contrast to punctate inner chorioretinopathy, which is not associated with vitritis, hence the lack of popcorn. Whoa! Looks like the bats are coming back to their cave. Let this cave next to both the punctate inner chorioretinopathy and multifocal choroiditis sketches be an important reminder that both these white dot syndromes can mimic ocular histoplasmosis, which is associated with bats and spelunking in caves. I love that word, spelunking. Anyways, unlike multifocal choroiditis, histoplasmosis is not associated with vitritis, hence the no feeding the bats sign near the cave. Please do not feed the bats popcorn. That is not part of their natural diet. Let's now turn our attention to the zoo's aviary. Notice this cute elderly couple watching the birds holding sparklers, another reminder that photopsias are common in these white dot syndromes. Birdshot chorioretinopathy tends to affect patients in their 50s and 60s, and they will present with complaints of color vision disturbances and flickering sparkles. This cute couple is also eating popcorn and trying to feed the birds. Let this popcorn, once again, be a reminder that this condition presents with vitreous cell. Notice we have two big birds on the left and nine little birds on the right separated by a water fountain. This disease is highly correlated to the HLA A29 allele. Let the A in aviary remind you of that and let the birds be a reminder of the two 
and 9 in the associated allele. Vision loss in this syndrome is typically associated with macular edema. Let this water fountain be a symbol for swelling in the retina. Whoops! Looks like those birds are starting to get full from all that popcorn. Let this bird poop next to the white ring suspended in their aviary be a reminder that the white and yellow lesions in this syndrome tend to be more saturated in the inferior nasal retina. The white ring represents the optic nerve head and is on the nasal side of the retina, and the excrement is inferior to this ring. Although the white dots show up all around the retina, it tends to be more concentrated infronasally. The green x-ray of the bird skeleton is a reminder that these lesions are more apparent on endocyanide green testing with well-delineated hypocyanescent spots at mid-phase and late phase. This test usually reveals more fundus lesions than is visible on either fluorescein angiography or on clinical examination. Alrighty, almost complete with our tour of the White Dot Zoo. Let's take a look at our oldest exhibit. We made it to one of our longest running exhibits, Serpiginous Chorioretinopathy. Let this serpent remind you of this syndrome. Although most of the white dot syndromes are self-limited, Serpiginous Chorioretinopathy is a chronic, progressive, and recurrent inflammatory disease. That's why it's the longest running exhibit. Notice this elderly couple spilling their glass of wine at the mere sight of the snake. This syndrome often affects older adults, both men and women equally. Let their spilled cup of wine be a reminder that choroidal neovascularization is the most common complication in this syndrome, affecting up to 35% of patients. Let this snake wrapping around this white circular stone be a reminder that the lesions in this syndrome are peripapillary with centrifugal spread. Now that we've made it to the end of the sketch, let this turn back sign be a reminder that TB or tuberculosis is a condition that must be ruled out before diagnosing a patient with this syndrome as tuberculosis infection can appear very similar. This world map is a sign that this condition is also called geographic choroiditis. Well, we've made it through our tour of the zoo. Although a lot of these white dot syndromes are self-limited, consider steroids if the inflammation is not resolving or threatening the fovea. If steroids fail to control inflammation, immunomodulators can also be used. Let this worker on the side modulating electricity flowing through the zoo be a reminder that immunomodulation is often the mainstay of treatment for especially resistant cases.